Are you guys hear me? Thank you, thank you. All right, I'll be back. Um, we'll do the disclaimer and everything, and then uh, we'll get started. I'll be right back. Risk disclosure statement. There is a risk of loss in trading stocks, BDS, commodity futures, derivatives, options, forms, and cryptocurrencies. This risk may be substantial, and therefore, investors should definitely consider their financial ability prior to trading. Past performance is not indicative of future performance. The software, strategy, chat room, websites, and any associated websites, digital names, and for educational purposes only, should not be considered as an expressive by promise or guarantee to achieve a profit that losses may be limited in any manner whatsoever. Users of the information accessible responsibility for the outcomes of the deployment of all supplements and trade, LLC, and any associated companies, agents, management, owners, and customers, pharmacists, doctors, and patients, please be responsible. Commodity Futures Trading Commission, CITC, Rule 4041, hypothetical simulated trading performance results at certain narrow limitations, some of which are described herein. No representation is being made of any known loss, lobby to achieve profits or losses similar to those In fact, there are frequently sharp differences between hypothetical or simulated performance results and the actual results subsequently achieved by any particular trading program. One of the limitations of hypothetical performance results is that they are generally prepared with the benefit of hindsight. In addition, hypothetical trading does not involve financial risk, and no hypothetical trading recording completely accounts for the impact of financial risk in actual trading. For example, the ability to extend losses or adhere to particular trading programs and stop trading losses on material points which can also adversely affect actual trading results. Because these trades have not actually been executed, the hypothetical results may not be overcompensated for the impact, if any, of certain market factors such as lack of liquidity. There are numerous other factors related to the market in general and implementation of any specific trading program which cannot be fully accounted for in simulated trading or in preparation of hypothetical performance results at all, but which adversely affect actual trading results. This trade room and its webinars are not intended to mirror my trades or to give specific trade recommendations. The analysis of the general trades and test trade might take place on my personal analysis. The goal of the service is to identify specific trades trading measures and results of only decision makers. Trading extremely risky and decided upon my personal trades results are no risk and potentially use an entire company in one. And that was probably only a 15 dollars in my trading accounts. The spreadsheet that I have to my personal spreadsheet that I use at its own value to make care of them is now even waiting to price my trades. You can see when I add its own license to the master spreadsheet, as well as prices that are trading by the way, the long or short. You have the ability to add this spreadsheet and add your own values and use mine to confirm its own prices and the own spread result. The spreadsheet is not done with respect to the trades and such prices and top prices will go on short positions depending on the trading person decides. All right. <clears throat> so I had to run out. I still had that NASDAQ trade on, of course, missed the uh, <clears throat> missed the red lug, like I did earlier with gold that cost me. Oops, where's just quickly so you can see it, but most of you I'm sure know. Oops. What is going on with this thing? Hold on. So obviously, should have, I still had a couple left. PTC long retested. I would have been out of here, but I was gone. I should have just put in resting order there because we know how ridiculous things are. And there you go. Cost myself 40 points. All right. Um, enough of my bitching for today. We'll get my hands on. Uh, so for those of you that don't know, and started in here last February, <clears throat> we did a couple one-on-one -on -one, uh, mentoring sessions, and he can tell you all about it. How he said, you know, he's been in trade rooms for 10 years, and he's never seen anything like this, and he, it clicked right away for him, and he just followed the rules and started with a real $100,000 account, and he turned it into 1.5 million last year. So. That's <clears throat> all you guys ever hear me talk about. I mean, I wish I know I know there's other examples in here of traders making money, but that's pretty extreme. Not that it can't be done, right? But he's gonna he's that's the whole point. It can be done and it will be done if you follow rules. You know, again, depending on your account size and so on and so forth. But point is, like I always say, if Lance can do it, you can do it. And that's no slight against Lance, and he'll be the first one to say it, right? If you follow the rules, grasp what I'm trying to teach you and then master yourself you can do it just like he did so he's going to go over how he you know we don't agree on everything he, he follows the rules of getting in but he gets out in certain places and again i can't argue with the guy how he gets out in some of his trades and i've never argued with any of you i've never given you guys verbal lashings about where to get out right i give you i give a verbal lashings on the stupid i trail my stop to break even and he may do this i don't know if he does and i'm gonna give him a verbal lashing too because i still think that's the dumbest thing that you can do trail your stop to something that's actually occurring in the market that's all i ever say but where you get out that's up to you right when we, you see my areas that i get out right i get out at loves and so on and so forth if you like getting out and on a, on a i mean i would hope it would be something that's worthwhile in the marketplace in, in that actual market you're trading and not just because it because it moved five points but i've never told you you need to get out in these certain areas i show you where i get out i do say don't try your stops to break even other than that you know it's up to you but he's going to show you a different version of of how he's doing things and the whole idea is to pick up a little bit of what he's, he's doing and you can build your own trade plan along with what you're learning from me so without further ado i'm going to give lance the uh, presenter screen here <clears throat> you on there lance cannot hear you so you might want to unmute yourself
Bueller. Bueller. Okay. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Okay. <clears throat> I'm here, guys. Of the screen as well when you want to, if you want to show your screen or whatever. Um, but fire away. I'll be here if you need me. As Scott said, my name's Lance. Give you a little history about myself. Uh, I am a produce broker by trade. Um, so similar to I buy and sell produce, and that's very similar to what we do here as a commodity. It's always changing price, always going up and down, and there's a market. And so for me, this is kind of second nature. I've been trading for probably about 20 years. I started with um, Invest Tools. I went through the Invest Tools Trading School, um, their whole course that they have that goes through options, stocks, uh, futures, etc. And I never really had the success that I felt that I should be having. I was profitable, but I didn't feel I had the success that I should be. I've been in and out of trading rooms, as Scott says, and for the most part, the mo most of the trading rooms out there, in my opinion, are there. They Some of them do a good job, some of them don't, but generally speaking, all they want to do is sell you another indicator, sell you another uh, program that they've got, sell you this, sell you that. It's all a program designed to take every single bit of your money that you make and give it back to them in their upcharges. And when I discovered Bookmap, the I discovered it and I thought, you know, I need to know what's going on here with this Bookmap. I got an email or whatever, and I need to know what's going on. So I began to spend some time in the webinars on Bookmap, and that's when I discovered Scott's room and what he said resonated with me. It was what I was missing in my trading. It was where the big guys are, where the big money is, and following the big money, and more importantly, when to get out and keep greed in check. And so <clears throat> that's kind of where I started. When I, when I started Scott's Room, I believe I started in January of last year. And when I started in Scott's Room, and these, uh, what I'm saying here is published in different posts that I have put in the room. So it's not anything that a lot of you guys don't know. But I stopped everything else I was doing. And I began to learn a new system here. And when I began to learn the new system, I paid attention to what Scott was saying. It's like drinking from a fire hose at first uh, because what he was saying was new and I couldn't understand it. And I was the guy, Scott's got all these setups. He's got the da da, the dumb and dumber and all this stuff. And he was the, um, every Tuesday, the garbage truck goes by and he says, now we got the garbage truck. And I said, well, what setup is that? I haven't seen the garbage truck set up. And he said in the room, if he said, if you don't know what the garbage truck is, you probably shouldn't be trading. And I was just trying to figure out, we've got all these different names for the setups and I was just trying to figure out what the garbage truck setup was because I didn't know. But nevertheless, I stopped and I just listened in the room for two months. It took me two months to grasp what was going on in the room. And once it finally resonated with me, it finally resonated with me. I started with the one ATR trades. The one ATR trades were, are, you know, the ATR trades are the basis on what most of these other trades go. And so I began trading the one ATR trades. And then I, so this took place between January and March. I did my learning session and I made myself make $75,000 in play money before I started with real money. And I started in real money within March. Scott's told you what the um, returns have been. I'm going to show you my Trader Sync page here in just a minute. When I uh, get finished here, I'll show you my Trader Sync page and then we'll open it up for some questions. I've talked to many of you guys on um, the Discord, and a lot of you guys have sent me 
direct messages, what have you. I've talked to many of you in person, and I will tell you that uh, sometimes I'm not the greatest typist in the world, and so I would prefer to have the conversation in person. It takes a little less time than it does for me to talk. I'm available. If you guys send me a direct message, I try to reply to every single one of them, and I will talk to you one-on-one -on -one if you so choose to do so. It's not anything that I'm trying to take away from Scott. You should have these conversations with Scott. However, if you want a different perspective on what's going on, I've told Scott about this. You know, Scott and I talk quite often, and Scott's very open to having me discuss anything you want to discuss with me without him. I'm there's He and I have no problem there, and I'm not trying to undermine anything Scott does. I will tell you that I have some different trading uh, deals than what Scott does. As he said, I exit different than he does at some point in time, and but I don't break the rules on the entry. And my exit strategies are when I'm not afraid to put profit in the bank. I'm not trying to milk every last nickel out of a trade. Sure, I walk away from some trades that are a lot of money. I got out at, you know, 20 points and it was a 100-point trade. Yes, I walked away from 80 points on the trade, but I still put some money in the bank and I move on to the next trade. And so a lot of what I've done has been trial and error and learning from my mistakes, which I'm going to show you here um, in a little bit when I go through my trader sync with you because I log my trades and I can look and see what's costing me money and what isn't costing me money. But the most common mistake that I see from everybody that sends me direct messages is greed and FOMO. And a lot of the messages that I get are, are you taking aggressive entries? Are you taking these entries? Are you doing this? Are you doing this? all of which don't have anything to do with following the rules. I follow the rules. I don't break the rules. I have some rules that I have uh, specifically for myself that are a little different than what Scott does. <clears throat> However, what Scott teaches, Scott is teaching. And I have adapted what Scott teaches to myself. For instance, I do not trade when the Fed guys are talking. My statistics tell me that I have lost $19,329.60 trading when the Fed guys are talking. So for me, that's just like making $20,000 that day because I didn't lose it. So I figure it's cheaper for me to take that day off than lose 20,000 bucks, which is what my statistics tell me. So I don't trade when the Fed guys trade talk. I trade around them, but if I'm in a trade, I close it before a Fed guy is going to speak. And if there are multiple Fed guys going to speak in a row, then I'm just taking that day off. My statistics say that that is more profitable for me than losing money. So I have some of those other things that I'll share with you. And um, you'll see that what I trade is a real account. It has real profits, real losses, real um, mistakes, just as Scott was talking about this morning. He made a mistake on not getting out of some trades and he was mad at himself for it. I have those same issues, which is why a lot of you guys ask me what I trade. I trade ES and I trade NQ. I only trade those two um, underlings because that's all I can keep track of. I have, I run two other companies. As I told you, I'm a produce broker. My phone starts ringing at five o'clock in the morning and I have to answer it. That's how I, that's also how I make money and I sell produce. And so when I'm trying to trade and answer the phone and sell potatoes at the same time, I make mistakes just like everybody else does. You'll see those mistakes in the, the numbers that I'm gonna give you here in a little bit. That's why I only trade two accounts. It's not that the setups don't work in all the other ones, I can't watch them all at the same time. So I just don't do it. The other thing that I do most of the time 
there are very few times that I have a trade going in multiple accounts at the same time. So if I'm in a trade in ES, I'm typically not in a trade in NQ. If I, or if I'm in a trade in NQ, I'm typically not in a trade in ES. I don't trade multiple setups at the same time. I trade one setup at a time, one account at a time. And if a new setup presents itself, then I'm typically going to close one trade and enter the next trade. And so I'm typically in one trade at a time, one account at a time, 95% of the time. So there are times that there are trades that overlap that I'm getting in, but 95% of the time, it's one at a time, one at a account at a time. Um, so those are that's kind of what I've done here. I'll share some stuff with you. I've got a hard hour here. Uh, at 11 o'clock, I have to be in another meeting by 11.15. So if we don't finish today, any of your questions and what you guys have, uh, I'm more than happy to come on. I told Scott this earlier, I can I have some time on Tuesday available that I could come back the following Tuesday. And um, I'm more than happy to answer any of your questions um, anytime through either direct message. And if it's too long in a direct message, I might request a phone call because I'm not the greatest typist in the world. So uh, that being said, I'm gonna show you, um, if I can figure out how to. Should see a share screen or uh, yeah, a share screen. Yeah, hang on just a minute. I think I got it here. Okay, does it, has it come through yet? No, not yet. There you go, now I, now I got it. Okay. Okay, here's my, here's my Trader Sync account <clears throat> for uh, the year. And before I get into this, I'll tell you the tools that I use that Scott uh, has. Um, I use the lugs, I use Spot Gamma, I use Trader Sync as you can see by the screen here. And another tool that I use is TAS boxes, which Scott doesn't talk about a lot. I use them not to get in or out of any trades, but I use them to confirm. Uh, it's something that I've used for a long time and I've instituted it into my trading here as well. It'll give you uh, momentum changes, those kinds of things that it's just a little bit different view. Um, so, and as far as TraderSync goes, if you guys, a lot of you guys that contact me on direct messages ask me, you know, about it, TraderSync is something that, in my opinion, you need to use because it starts um, revealing your errors very, very quickly, and you can see what's going on, when you're making money, what setups you're losing money on, and you can start analyzing them. Um, I track my trades. Uh, you can see here that my return last year was 1,050%. I started this account with $150,000. It now has 1.726 million in it with a win percentage of 63.95% wins versus losses. These are, you can see um, uh, where, it, where it is. These are all the setups I use. I use the ATR short, ATR long, two ATR long, two ATR short, three ATR long, three ATR short. The data, all the setups are in here and they all have a long and short uh, setup with them. It tells you exactly how much money you've made in each single, um, setup. For instance, my BARF shorts last year, I made $282,288 in BARF shorts, $354,835 in BARF longs. Um, every setup is here. I also track my mistakes. For instance, 
shorted into a blue lug. I lost $3,000. Platform malfunction. I lost $55,000 last year in platform malfunctions, which also include internet crashes of 26,000. Order entry errors. You hear Scott talk about order entry errors every day. He did this wrong, he did that wrong. My order entry errors last year cost me $125,000 because I'm trying to trade when I'm talking on the phone, doing whatever else I'm doing, not paying attention, and enter the wrong order. So, so you, you also mean like leaving leaving orders in the order book like I did today, things like that, right? Exactly. Like, and there's, there's, right, right. right. All of these things are there. Stop loss incorrect. Opposite order entry. Broke the entry rules. Minus $19,450.68 when I broke the order entry rules. You know, Trading during Fed speak minus nineteen thousand two three hundred and twenty nine dollars. You know, when you start looking at these numbers, it was very obvious to me that it's more profitable for me not to trade when the Fed guys are talking. So I just don't do it anymore. There's too many other ways to make money rather than let these guys say one third thing out of their mouth and smoke you. And you know the. As Scott says, the whole market is designed to take some of your money every day, as much as they can get. And I happen to look at it in another perspective of there's a river with billions of dollars flowing into it. And all you got to do is stick your cup in and take a little bit out. They're trying to take yours. All you got to do is take a little bit out of it every day. And the other thing that I see. A lot of you guys that contact me, and some of you know who you are because we've had conversations about it, of knowing when to stop. You know, I, I was telling Scott this morning when, when he and I talked that one of, the, one of the hardest things for me to have figured out is I've been a workaholic for my entire life. I was raised from a kid that I started working at five years old with my dad. He had supermarkets and I used to rack pop bottles. And I don't know what it is not to work. And so when I'm finished trading, you know, I I made fifteen or twenty thousand dollars by nine thirty in the morning. It's like I don't know what to do with myself because the work day's not over yet. And I don't know how to turn the computer off and it, it it messes with me mentally to stop. Well, stopping when you're ahead is the key to putting money in the bank. You can't go broke putting money in the bank. And a lot of guys, I you know have these guys that call me and they they say or they send me messages. I don't know what I'm doing. I was up thirty five hundred dollars and I went home five hundred dollars loser. How how do you do that? How do you take $3,500 that you have profit that you're done with and then go home $500 loser? Just doesn't make any sense to me. And it's it's just, I can't, you know, if you're up, I have a rule. If I'm up in a day, I can't go home negative. That's the way it is. I right. don't care if I got to stop at 930 in the morning. I'm not going home minus if I'm plus today. Right, and, and to expand on that, I've talked about this so many times, right? This is, you absolutely, so what I always say, if, you know, we know all know how hard the markets are in most days, right? So in the days that you're killing it, you don't, and you, you're not saying this at all. You're not saying, I had a certain amount and I just turn it up, right? You're saying, I make sure I leave this money. So what I, what I try to tell people, and this is the first thing I saw with the idiots at the trading firm, that were, that's actually inspired me to, to make the money in the first place because I saw these clowns were making money and I knew I could do it. But I, I, you guys have heard this story so many times where they would, the, the, for some reason, the magic number was five grand. They would get a five grand and then they would just stop for the day and then go in the trade room. And what I say, well, and I would be sitting there like, well, if you can make five, why would you not sit here and make 10? That doesn't mean you make five and you risk the whole five and then you lose, have a losing day. It means you give yourself at least one more, and this has to be in your trade plan. And it's whatever you decide you're comfortable with. You give yourself at least another trade or a percentage. Okay, I'm up five. I hit my five grand goal. 
now I'm going to risk 500 bucks, aka one trade, or I'm risking a thousand bucks, you know, 20% back, then I'm done, right? So I've never said you just keep trading and then you give it all back. I said, if you're doing well, don't just hit a mark and quit. Give yourself a, you know, a little bit of pullback, whatever you decide, and then you quit. So that that's what he's saying. He's not saying I, I just make you know 20 grand and I turn it off. I mean, some days he does because he's on their job. But the point is, if you're seeing things clearly, do not turn off that computer. Give yourself a stop loss and then turn it off. And so that's I just want to interject there. But sorry, let's go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. What he's saying is is absolutely correct. There are days that you're seeing it. I think the I think I had one day last year that I made seventy nine thousand dollars, and I was seeing it that day. But I didn't let that seventy nine thousand dollars get greed in my head when I wasn't when I wasn't seeing it anymore, and I had a couple of losing trades. Okay, I'm done, and I walked away. You know, yeah, maybe I could have gotten it up, but I I'm like the rest of everybody else that's been trading, trying to turn five thousand dollars into six and go home a thousand dollars loser and so i don't do that anymore and what scott's saying is correct i i give myself a limit whatever that is you know if i've got to start working at my other job then whatever it is it is when i turn it off the other rule that i have is when i turn my computer off and i'm done for the day i'm done for the day i do not turn that computer back on and go back to trading until the following day um it's that's another thing that has uh, taught me a lesson. You know, I always go back and lose some back, and I'm thinking, why did I do that? Why didn't I just go play golf or something? And so um, those are kind of my rules that I have. I'm sure there's a lot of questions that you guys have, but these are these are the real, and I'm happy to send a screenshot uh to anybody that wants to look at this if you have any questions on how i use my trader sync how i use um all of these things uh, i'm happy to answer the questions but as you can see this is a real account real trades all the stuff is in there i i track every setup every every one i do um my trading size now is typically um 25 contracts and uh if i trade double size it's 50 and i've kept my i've kept my trading at that level that's kind of where i'm comfortable trading and um i will uh leave it at that so uh i'm seeing some questions here in the in the deal um sorry to ask questions so soon uh what time do you start trading that's another thing that I forgot to tell you. I don't trade during the first 15 minutes of the market. I typically settle in and let the market settle out before, and I use 15 minutes as a guide. It might be a little longer, a little shorter on some days, but I typically use 15 minutes as a guide. So I start trading at uh, um, 6.45 Pacific, 9.45 Eastern, which is, typically when I start trading. I listen to what's going on here for 15 minutes, find out what's going on, let the big guys get their action and the whipsaws going back and forth, settle down, and then that's when I start. So Lance, if you, um, what, if, what if a setup comes in at right at the open and then it just does nothing and then, then you get the setup and then you start trading, will you trade that setup 15 um, minutes later? If, if it retests, you know, yes. it does all the stuff, okay. Yes, I will trade that setup 15 minutes later. I just typically don't trade it as it happens in the first 15 minutes. Got it. Um, uh, Grumpy has news question mark. I don't actually understand that question. There was a big, there was a big move in the market and four times volumes coming through. So there was some news, but of course we're the last to know, but that's what he was asking if there was a news story out. Oh, okay. Um, and then, uh, uh, my yeah, my Trader Sync link. I believe I shared my Trader Sync link in the uh, um, in the Discord. But yes, I will share it again. And it's 
how many times do you trade intraday? I'm typically done trading. My, my typical trading day, I'm usually done by 9.30 or 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, that's all the time I have to devote to trading. And it's not, I would probably trade all day long if I didn't have other jobs that I had to work. But typically I'm trading, uh, my trading is typically finished by 9.30, 10 o'clock. And then, how do you deal with losses? Losses are just a part of trading. You're not going to have, every trade is not going to be a win. But you can see, you can see in my statistics here, you know, here's a loss, multiple wins, a loss, multiple wins, a loss. Multiple, you know, you can see that the, the greens outweigh the reds, but there are going to be reds. Um, but this is what I, this is, this is another thing that, I should say, in almost more than 90% of the time on Scott's setups, there is an opportunity for profit. There's very, very, very few times that I take an entry on one of Scott's setups and it just turns around and goes straight against me and stops me out. There is almost always an opportunity for the profit. So at that point in time, you have to ask yourself, why am I not taking more of them? And I'm back to the same thing. You can't go broke putting money in the bank. And so, you know, if it's coming up to a red lug and I'm in there and my lug is the target, if it comes up short of the red lug and pulls back, comes up short of the red lug and pulls back, I'm not going to let it turn around and go all the way against me 100 points and stop me out. I'm going to take the trade off. And that's some of the that's some of the differences in where Scott and I differ in um, how we trade on the lick trades. You know, a lot of times you hear Scott say it's lick or nothing. Well, if it goes up to the lick and pulls back, and runs away from it, runs away from it. When it, pull, when it runs back up there, I'm going to take the trade off. I'm not going to let it go too far against me when I have a lot of profit in it. I, you know, it's not that important for me to milk another five points out of the trade or five ticks out of the trade. Just isn't that important. I take the, take the profit, move on to the next setup and roll on. Typically, another thing that I do so I don't get FOMO because I fight FOMO like the rest of everybody else. If I get out of a trade in ES, I typically move over to NQ and see what's going on over there. And then I'll go back and look at ES 10 or 15 minutes from now. So I'm not getting FOMO on that trade that just, you know, I got out at the lug and all of a sudden now it blows through the lug and keeps on going like a rocket ship, you know. And then I think I, I don't second guess my exits. If I put money in the bank, that was a good trade and I don't second guess the exit. So that's kind of um, where I am, but losses are real. They happen. You're going to lose some trades, but it's um, it's part of trading. I've been conditioned to losses for my entire life because that's what I do for a living. Being a produce broker on a on a spot market type deal, you don't win every you don't win everything you do, but you win more than you lose, and the odds are in your favor if you know what you're doing and Scott setups know what they're doing. They, the averages will work out my winning percentage, as you can see, in order to do what I did, I only had to win 63% of the time. That's not a great deal more than 50, 50, but you can see the results that it produced. And so, it's the setups are there. You just have to be willing to trade them. And if you put the trade on, you need to be willing to take the loss. It's like putting your money down at the blackjack table. If you go down to sit down and play blackjack and you put $100 down there, you're willing to lose the $100 or you wouldn't have put it down there. And it's the same thing with trading. You can't, you can't worry about the losses. The losses are there. They're going to be there. But so are your wins. And if you don't let your wins, you don't let your losses 
start messing with your mind and mess with the winds, you're you're going to be okay. You know, a lot of you guys that contact me also um there's so much here that I it's it's it just comes to mind as I keep talking. A lot of guys that contact me say, "Well, I said, well, what what what's your position size? Well, I'm trading, you know, 1% of my my deal. But after I lose a couple of trades, I go down to I, I adjust my position size and and you know, instead of taking three contracts, I'm only taking you know, six micros. Well, you lost the you lost three trades in a row that you're doing three contracts on, and so now you go down and you take six micros and you win that one. Well, you know, you need to be winning the same amount that you're losing. If you're trading three contracts, trade three contracts. I adjust my position size by the month. So if I'm going to trade on a hundred and fifty thousand dollar account at one percent on the risk, I trade that hundred and fifty thousand dollars all the way to the end of the month. I don't adjust it because I lost two trades in a row, and now I'm not going to take five contracts anymore, or now I'm not going to take three contracts anymore. I take the same amount of risk on every trade for the month, and then I change it at the end of the month, and I go to new risk, and then trade that for 30 days, and then go to new risk. If you're always adjusting your risk, you're winning the ones that you've got six micros on and losing the ones that you've got three regular ones on, because you're not you, 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 the law of averages has to be the law of averages. And so you've got to continue to take the straight risk on your accounts. And a lot of you guys send me that, well, I adjusted my risk down to this. And I, yeah, and you had a successful trade. The successful trades will outweigh the unsuccessful trades. But if you're only trading half size on your successful ones and full size on your unsuccessful ones, you're still losing money and it doesn't work that way. Um, let me see where I'm at here on the, I think, uh, how many points? I think Mike, Mike, how many points in the market are you looking for? I'm not looking for any necessarily any points. I take money as the market makes it available to me. Lit, um, you know, on the algo guy, when the algo guys cross, um, you know, lugs, any point of time, you know, resistance. If a market starts resisting a level and I'm in a trade and it's it's positive, then I take the trade off. It I just do. That's, um, you know, you can see when it's resisting. You can see when things are changing. And that's when I take the trades off. I, I don't. I I don't look back when I take a profit in a trade. Right, guys. So you got to you got to realize, right? He he's obviously conditioned himself. He's trading a little more on feel in this in these situations where he's okay getting out. And if the market turns around and rips fifty points in his favor that he would have had that trade on, he's okay. That he's not in the trade, right? I am the exact opposite. So it's like I wait for my levels, and that's where I'm getting out of these levels. I I can't, and which is. I had to condition myself to be this way because I used to be a feeble tra trader as a scalper. It for that for me it that doesn't work anymore. I I just cannot trade that way. I'm wrong all the time, right? So for me mentally, I have my areas that we talk about that's in trading in the zone, and I wait for those levels, and that's where I exit. He's more of a field trader where he was watching it closely. If it gets close to the things that he's looking at and he feels like it's turning, he gets out. If it comes, we know these markets whips off, but he's basically saying, I'm accepting if it turns around and comes back and then continues higher another 30, 50 points, I'm okay with that, right? That's what you guys need to realize. You have to learn to master that, master your mind in, in the trading. That's all we talk about lately, right? So th th this is more where he can't really teach you where to get out like he's for the way he trades my method is more black and white right so that's why i teach it it doesn't mean you have to get out those areas you can be close to him or whatever but just realize this isn't he's not getting out in an area where you guys can just plug and play today right like you've got to come up with these on your own but it's just a different take what he's doing works for him that method does not work for me personally anymore. I need to have structure in my trading and not use my gut because I'm always wrong with my gut. I was saying, I take that back. It's more 
<clears throat> not that I'm always wrong, like areas I might want to get out. I can't handle if I say, say my target, say it's a lick trade, right? And I'm like, okay, licks 20 points away. I'm staying in this trade till it gets to lick. And then it kind of gets to another area that I want, like VWAP, for instance, like, oh, well, it's kind of struggling here. I'm going to get out and I'll get out of VWAP. And then the market will turn around and go to the lick, another 20 points higher. I'm beside myself, right? So you got to figure out mentally what you can handle and you know yourself. So that's how you have to trade, right? That's the whole point. But it's not going to be where he's just going to be like you do A, B, and C, and D like I do for you guys, right? But take kind of what he's saying and start to see, yeah, you know what I've noticed every time I put the, I put on a trade with these setups, the thing is in my favor. What should I do? Should I should I just take some off at, at a certain level at, at the levels I find important, the intermediate levels, or should I wait for the bigger move, right? This is all stuff. This is not like black and white stuff that he's talking about. So just realize that. Yeah, and and you know, a lot of times I will. Scott just said it. You know, it looks like it's stalling here or whatever. I'll take the trade off. And typically, as I said, I move over to from one to the other, and I'll move over to like from ES to NQ, and I'll go back over there. And a lot of times, before it's going to get to that lick up there, a lot of times there's another setup, and you can get back in, and that that gives you the uh, relief from FOMO. Okay, it's going to move a little higher. We got another setup here and we can roll on, get back into the trade. If it doesn't give me another setup, I don't get back in. And I'm all right putting profit in the bank. I, you know, I've spent my entire trading career not getting out when I should get out and not putting money in the bank and watching thousands and thousands of dollars turn around and go back against me because I was looking for a little more. And so this is what has been successful for me. It may not be successful for you, but I I don't have a problem putting a little money in the bank and even watching the thing go down, you know, another hundred points. And th I don't, man, I wish I'd have stayed in there because the next time I stay in there and do that, it goes a hundred points against me. And I'm thinking, what the hell did you just do? And so, um, you know, I don't, I don't second guess my exits. Um, I take my stops. I take the the stop losses when they are, but I do not second guess my exits if they were profitable. And that's where Scott and I differ on a couple of things, but th it worked for me. And so that's what, um, you know, that's where I come from. Um, uh, let me see where we at. I didn't hear Scott's talk about drawdowns. Um, how do I deal with my drawdowns? I mean, they're, they're drawdowns or losses. I mean, there are days that you're going to have losing days and that's okay. But my losing days, uh, I could show you my calendar if I can find it here. So what, what what's your drawdown for a day that you'll say, okay, uncle, I'm done. I'm not gonna lose more than this amount. I try not to lose more than 20 grand a day. Okay. And you guys can see my calendar. You guys can see my calendar here um, on my trading days. Here's a $25,000 loser. But you can see that I don't have a lot of losing days. Here's one that's 39. And the day that I lost 39 was right after, whoops, hold on. The day that I lost 39 was, why isn't it showing here? Come on. You guys, you get discounts to this. Trader Sync too, I might go to my website, click on that link and you get discounts to this. You should all be using it. I need to use it more too. So he's, he's basically telling you this okay, is so, this trading of, of why he trades. Yeah, okay, so here's a day, here's a day that I broke my rules, okay? I lost $39,000 on a day that I made 70 the day before. I was feeling pretty good after making 70 the day before, broke my rules and it slapped me upside the head the very next day. So, you know, I'm human. I break the rules like everybody else. Here's one that, you know, I made 34 one day, lose 19 the next. It's 
the the losses are in there. They're there. Um, as you guys can see, I don't trade every single day. There's a lot of days that I do not get to trade because of other obligations. But you can see that when I do trade, my losing days are very far and few between. And so, you know, putting some money in the bank and not going home a loser, you know, there are days, here's one that's only 9,000. You know, uh, this was probably a day that I was up 25 or 26, went down to nine. I'm not going home a loser that day. I'm just not going to do it. Here's one that's $3,900 day. Uh, once again, I wasn't going to go home a loser. And so I'm, it may not have been what I had originally that I'd built up to, but you take some losses and I stop. I'm I'm not gonna go home a loser if I can help it. Those are those are very very big items to me. Um, let's see here. What's your morning routine? What do you do every day before you start trading at 6:45? I come into the room. I usually read uh, Spot Gamma before I sit out at my desk. Um, I will sit down and. Well, as I sit down at my desk, I will read Spot Gamma's report, and then I log into the room, wait 15 minutes, and start trading on the next setup that comes along. That's my routine. Um, helps with the prop account, the pullback, hurt trading drawdown. I don't know about the prop accounts and the trailing drawdowns and all that because I trade real money and. A lot of you guys, speaking of the prop accounts and trailing drawdowns, a lot of you guys that contact me are trading the Apex accounts and the trailing drawdown, and I understand how that trailing drawdown works. But a lot of you guys in these Apex accounts do not treat these Apex accounts like real money. You have to treat them like real money. This is not a video game. And you do stupid stuff, you make stupid entries, and you don't follow the rules, and you blow your Apex account out. And I've had many people that I know in the room have direct, direct messaged me, quit trading because they can't keep do, quit doing stupid stuff and they blow their Apex accounts out. And those Apex accounts at you know $40 a whack or $50 a whack or whatever they charge you to re-up them, that all adds up at the end of the year. And all of a sudden their credit cards maxed out and they're not following the rules and they've done stupid stuff and now they can't trade anymore. You, if you follow the rules, you don't have to do that. Um, regarding ATR BARF entry rules, how did you tweak them to suit you? Uh, Mason, I don't actually understand what you're asking i didn't tweak the rules to suit me i just used the rules if um yeah, you said you, enter, you, enter, I, you don't break your rules entering it's getting out where you you differ from me but you're you're following the rules in the spreadsheet right you plug them you plug it in the spreadsheet and absolutely you, yeah that's what I, I think. absolutely i take the same entries that you guys are taking i just get out different than you do than than some of you do you know, some of you guys, I know there are some successful traders in here. There's there's no question about it because, um, I, you know, I've, I've had conversations with them. And, you know, my rules, I, I'm taking the same entries that everybody else does. The difference is when some of you get out and when I get out. So that's, um, you know, I don't tweak the rules. I, I'm getting in at the same, I'm getting it in at the same time as everybody else does. Uh, is there a minimum risk reward you try to catch? No, uh, there is no minimum risk reward. I take the same, use the same uh, ATR that you guys do. However, um, if an ATR is, is um, you know, if there's going to be a lot of risk for not very much reward, then I just, that's usually a time of day that I just stop. Because if you're going to be risking you know, if the market's all over the place, you know, and the ATR is high, I usually just stop on those days because 
you know, the risk of what I'm willing to take about with what I'm going to lose if I lose on the trade simply isn't worth it. When the when the ATR gets, you know, 29, 30 or something like that on an NQ trade, I typically don't start taking those trades. Um, you mentioned you'll close a trade to take the next ES and Q. Even if it is flat or loser, could you come back? Why not just set your stops? That's, you know, you could do that. But, you know, like I said, I'm only in, I'm only in one trade at a time. If there's a, if I, let's say I'm in a bar flaw and all of a sudden algo guy crosses, then I'm just going to leave that trade as a bar flaw and then close it when algo guy starts doing what he's doing. So a barf long may, it may be a barf algo at the same time. I didn't necessarily close the barf and move on to the algo. It's gonna stay a barf, but if algo guy crossed, it's gonna be, I'm gonna get out when algo guy tells me to get out. So that's kind of what I'm talking about when, uh, when I'm saying one trade, closing one trade, but if, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna be in a barf long, and all of a sudden one of the other setups comes available, then I close one and take the other one. That's just how I do it. So I I can keep track. I had a I don't want a barf that turns into a slug to go haywire, and my successful barf barf was not taken and an unsuccessful slug and it looks like it it skewed my statistics a little bit so that's kind of why i do it that way um next question no do you ever take half off or is it all in or all out i'm either all in or all out i don't ever take half off or take any portion off and stay in a little longer I'm either, I trade all in or all out. Uh, am I correct in understanding your primary trade is BART trades that are entered? Well, I don't have a standard trade. I I don't trade a lot of ATRs um, as much as I used to. I'm, I'm taking, I take some ATRs. You'll see in December, I took some ATRs here and licks and all that. <laughs> Uh, typically, I don't have time to watch the ATRs as much anymore right now, but the ATRs are the starting position for everything else. So the ATR trades are something that, uh, um, you know, you can't take a bar for a lick without a successful ATR. So I take some, I don't take them all because I can't, I can't track them all. As soon as they get this automated, I will take all the one and AT, all the one and two ATRs. I would like to take every one if I could, but I can't track them. So that's um, you know I'm finding myself gravitating to the position trades a little more now, simply because I don't have time to continue to manage and take the one ATRs as they present themselves. But that's how I learned. That's the first position that I learned, and that's how I learned to do it. And I made myself learn those ATRs, force myself to sit through an ATR trade. That's another thing that I don't do. If I take an ATR, I either live with it or die with it. The ATR trade is non-subjective. You get in and you take your profit or you take your loss, period, end of story. It's a non-subjective trade. So uh, the, the the position trades are the ones that are subjective where I take exits a little different than Scott. And I should have said that earlier on, but the ATR trades are non-subjective. It's you take your profit or you take your loss. It's it, that's that. that that's how it's supposed to be, right? And that right. trade's supposed to be like you're an algo. You're not, you put it on, you have your stop, you have your exit. It's all right there in the spreadsheet and you let it work. If you're doing something different, then you're breaking the rules. <laughs> that's not it. Right. Um, let's see here. I tried to plug. Uh, my average, my average points on a trade. I think it's up here someplace. Hang on.
Uh, Michael, I don't know where that is. It, it will tell me um, there's a widget in here someplace that will tell me and I'll send you back a direct message on what my average points in a trade were. I don't have that information right now. Um, Madam, Madam Chisel, do you always put in limit orders for one ATRs or do you look for backdoor entries? I, if I'm taking them, I typically take them on, I try to take them uh, through the front door. If I miss them, every once in a while, I take them through the back door. And the back door is, uh, I don't have the stats to, to back this up, but I kind of like the back door entries because Sometimes they stop you from getting stopped out on the way back to the on the way back to the to the zone. So uh, I don't have any stats to say that though, but I take them both ways. So if I missed it going one way, I'll take it on the back door, but I don't chase. Um, any other questions, guys? Uh, Mike said when the ATR trades are automated, at some point in time, I um, have heard that, I think Scott can clarify this, but at some point in time, I've heard that there's going to be an automation available. Is that right, Scott? Yeah, well, we were working on that. Incorrect? We just signed with this trading firm. So as of right now, we're just it's going to be running at the firm. You will get the stats, so you're going to know. You know when this thing's trading live when we're running all these they're going to be a plus reversions only too so we've gone over what a plus reversions are and i'll continue to talk about those i'm not going to talk about it right now but we're going to run we're going to run these with the firm um but no there's never going to be i mean i'm not going to there's not going to be an automated where it fires off trades for you there's, there's too much liability on my part and, and Johan's part right so if we come up with a tool and you're letting it trade for you and something goes wrong and you lose you know 100 grand you, you can turn around and sue me like no thanks so you, you have you have the rules if you want if you want to hire a developer to, to make it for you be my guest right so i was going to make a course on it but i'm that's another perk of being in the room you guys are seeing every day i talk about it you know we can talk about it more if you ever want me to point them out i point them out when when they happen i don't take them on the webinars like i said because they're, they're too labor intensive on the webinars um but you know I do talk about exactly what they are. So if you want to hire a programmer to to, to automate it for you, you you, you see all the rules. It's on the it's on the damn. You see the the lines on the chart. If you have the zone drawing tool pro, that's that's the trade. And you just get someone automated for you. But no, there's never going to be a tool where I give to you guys and then you trade with it. That, that's there's too much liability. Okay, well that's I I mis I misspoke and misunderstood. Then I I apologize. No problem. Well, with, with the money you're making, Any other you, can hire, you can hire a team of developers <laughs> to, to, to automate everything. <laughs> um, I got time for I got time for one more here. I'm going to end it. I'm going to end at eleven ten, and then I'll answer direct messages or Scott, if you feel if if there's a need and if there's a desire, I'm more than happy to come back on. I've got some time on Tuesday. I could come back. It's up to it's up okay. To so. Mike, I know each trade is different, but on average, oh, um, no, I didn't, Mike. I, I I don't have the average points on a trade. Trader Sync will give it to me. I've got to find, uh, what, what I've got to find a setting in there. If you take an ES trade, what do you think you're, how many points do you take out of it? Just a blind guess. Three points, five points, 10 points? Somewhere between five and 10. Okay, yeah. So pretty much about an ATR, yes. one or two ATRs, right? Because the ATR is usually exactly. around three, three or four, three, four or five. You're taking about two ATRs out of the trade. And there's nothing wrong with that either, guys. Exactly. You put on trades, you can say, because as we have a trade that plays for the snapback at ATRs. So if you want to get out when the thing hits two ATRs, there's nothing wrong with that. I've never said there's anything wrong with it. The only thing I've ever said is stop trailing your damn stops to break even in the middle of nowhere just because you don't want to get back money. That's the dumbest thing I've, the second dumbest thing I've ever heard in trading. Where you get out, it, you, you're hearing it live, right? He's explaining, I this is how I do it. Fine, get out wherever the hell you want to get out. Yeah, you, you know, you have all these trading books saying you should take two to one, you should demand three, four, five R. 
yeah, if you're willing to sit through the trade and watch it come back and forth 85,000 times in a the day, then trade that way. If you are more like Lance that likes to take money off the table, then trade that way. This is tough. Hey, guys, no one's going to hold your hand for this. You have to figure out what you are built for, what you're okay with, and trade that way. That's what that's what coming up with a trade plan means. Yeah, and I do not trail my stock to break even. I do not do that. It's I'm either in or I'm out. And I'm either going to take the profit out of the trade or I'm going to take the loss. That's that's how I trade. Go. I do not, there I you do go. not trade my I mean, anything you take from this webinar, right? I mean, he said a bunch of great stuff right there. He and he said the same thing in the reversion trade. I put the trade on. I'm either that's more black and white because he's getting out at the exact prices on the on he does his own. But even with his position trading, he's putting the trade on. Yeah, he's getting out more on feel and in different areas. But he he's if he's wrong, he stops out. He does not move his stop to break even. He's not imposing his will on the market. Use the volume events to trail your stops to and so on and so forth. That's all I ever talk about. But there you go. You're hearing from a guy that made over a million dollars. Looks like he's up another 200 grand this year already, right? It's like, it's not, this is not just hypothetical stuff. Right. And the other thing that I do not do is if it's going to stop me out, I don't grab the stop and move it a little lower. If it stops me out, it stops me out. I don't I don't think, oh, well, it's going to turn around right here. It's going to turn around right here and grab the stop and move it down another five points. No, if it's going to stop me out, it stops me out. It's it. That's that. And I'm on to the next trade. Exactly. Awesome. All right. I know you got to run. Uh, you guys, if you want to do it, you know, come up with more questions. Well, he said he's, he'll do it again next Tuesday. Um, I'd like to get I'd like to have once a week where a trader comes on and, and talks about their successes. This guy's this even if you're not killing it. I used to have a playback playbook webinar that we do every week where guys would come on and talk about their playbooks. I'm more than happy to do that. But it got to the point where I would get on the, the playback webinar and nobody would offer a playbook and I'm just talking like I do it on the webinars, right? So all this stuff is available to you. I want to see some damn participation from all you little silent secret squirrels out there. And this room could blow up and you can all be making a million and a half dollars a year. It's like it's right there for the taking participate right so well again i'd love to have weekly we have a trader come on like lance but thanks for doing this lance it's you know it's not easy some people are, are not great public speakers either so i really appreciate you coming on and i know these guys do too so you're a real person and well good yeah let me let me say one more thing that let me say one more thing before i get off and this is one of the things that really helped me when i first started in scott's room the first um when I first started in Scott's room, thing I wanted to know from Scott, and I contacted him, made him call me on the phone, was how do I get private tutoring? And I wanted private tutoring with Scott because I wanted to have to be accountable for the trades that I made. And there was no way. I was getting on a weekly meeting with Scott and have him go through my trades and say, why in the world did you enter that trade right there? It breaks the rules. There was no way I was getting on a meeting with Scott and have him lambast me for breaking oh, the rules and, and not do it. It's called verbal lashing. Please refer to it to the right, that, by the right, by the right name. <laughs> verbal lashing. There was no way I was going to get a verbal lashing every week from Scott for breaking the rules. And that that was just I mean, it's it's like a kid not wanting to get caught taking a cookie out of the cookie jar. There was no way I was going to do it. And I suggest to all of you that you find somebody in the room that you can. Speak with either through discord or whatever. There's another trader in the room, his J newbie trader. He's a very, very good friend of mine, very close friend of mine. He and I talk daily on our results from trading. I gotta share my wins, I gotta share my losses. I gotta share the stuff I did bad, I gotta share the stuff he did good, and so does he. Neither one of us wants to talk to the other guy and tell him the stupid stuff we did. And if you'll do that, it will help you. Um, you know, I don't know uh what it is about that but i don't want to admit 
to stupid stuff that I did and have to show a guy a loss. And it's, you know, when you, when you start treating it like real money and stop treating it like a video game, you, you'll, you'll be profitable and have to answer for your, you know, you have to answer. If you get a ticket, you got to go to court and pay the ticket. You know, I don't like doing that and I don't like getting the verbal lashing and I wasn't going to do it. That's so that's, (laughs) I strongly suggest that you guys do, you know, take some kind of approach like that. And Scott and I talk regularly. We don't talk as much as we used to, um, which is uh, neither here nor there. My schedule is pretty busy. His schedule is pretty busy, but we do catch up. And but I share my results. And the the one reason I share my results and the the calendar and stuff with Scott is because it holds me accountable. I don't want him, I don't want to send him losses. And you guys got to figure out a way to hold yourselves accountable. And, and that's one of the you things guys I see. For verbal lashing. So anytime you want some, let's, let's hook up one-on-one and I will verbal lash you till your heart's content. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, I will come back next week if we need to. Um, I'm more than happy to answer any direct messages, any anything that we have. And I'm kind of up against it right now. I got to be in a meeting in one minute. So I'm going to hop off and I appreciate Scott having me on and I appreciate Scott's room. It's the most valuable room in trading. He doesn't try to just nickel and dime you to death. He gives you the scoop. And that's really appreciative to me. I appreciate that, Lance. All right, guys. Thanks, Lance. You know, again, we'll see if they want to do it again next week. But uh, hopefully, you guys learned some stuff about what he's doing and about yourself. That's the key. Yes. Uh, all right. So no, no PM webinar today. I got something I got to do. So obviously, there's huge volume coming through the markets right now. So of course, you know, when I got to take off, it's it's not it's going to be crazy. But um, pay attention. I mean, there's, it, each bar is like at least 200% here. Something's going down, and you're going to get a big move right. out of here. Very, very likely. So. Um, I'll be back in the morning tomorrow's bookmap webinar, 9 a.m. Central. I'll see you guys later.